Hello everyone, my name is Youssef, I'm the CEO of Flyp. Um, imagine that you're buying something at a store online and at checkout, you see that the fastest delivery option is for business days. And you're like, screw it. I'll just go buy it off Amazon and I'll have it delivered to me tomorrow. 25% of customers today are abandoning their shopping cart online because the store does not offer a next day delivery. And this is the true reason behind the retail apocalypse. Um, and you may ask, so why, why don't they add an next day delivery then? The problem is adding a next day delivery is far from simple. It's quite complicated and often, often involves huge investments in infrastructure uh, in the form of new warehouses and, and new facilities. And this is something that frustrates retailers because more often than not, retailers already have this infrastructure built in. It's built in in the form of the tens of stores that they have in each state that they operate in. However, no delivery company can actually uh, deliver the parcels from the stores. Um, and that's where Flype comes in. So Flype is a platform that enables retailers to ship parcels from their individual stores to customers in other cities and in other countries uh, within the same or next day. Essentially what this does, it's, it decentralizes their entire logistics enabling each store they have to act as a distribution center, saving them millions of dollars in infrastructure and facility costs each year. How do we do it? Well, we enable them to ship their parcels with daily travelers. Let me tell you how it works. So let's say that there's a customer in LA buying something out of uh, rituals online. At checkout, he sees UPS that offers three business days, uh, and flight that offers a delivery tomorrow, and they're both at the same price. Naturally, the customer will choose the fastest option and checks out. On the other side, we have Alice, who's a registered and verified flyer. She's traveling tomorrow from New York to LA. Um, so she goes into the app, she registers her trip, and directly she gets assigned uh, 10 parcels from the virtual store just down her street. She goes into the store, picks up the items, just like she's buying in the store. So, so she knows the content of all of the items. Um, she goes home, pack them in her bag, and then when she arrives in LA, she simply drops all the parcels at a drop-off point uh, of one of our last mile delivery partners, and that's it. So it's just one pickup point, one drop-off point. So how much does Alice get for this? Well. The standard price today for next day delivery is $20. This is usually divided between the retailer uh, who takes a part of it and, and the customer as well. And this is what the traveler would get. Um, now, Flight takes a 50% cut out of that. And our last month delivery partner takes about $4 per parcel, um, leaving the traveler with a $13 profit per parcel. Now, if, as we said, uh, Alice would deliver 10 parcels, she'd gain $130 profit per trip. That's a one-way trip. So if a person would travel uh, a round trip every single month in a year, uh, they can make over $3,000 of pure profit uh, on flight. We've been working on flight pretty hard for the past two years. And these are some of our accomplishments that we're very proud of. We've performed a successful market test where we delivered 500 parcels from Stockholm to 27 cities around the world, proving an overwhelming demand uh, both from travelers who want to deliver and from retailers. Um, we closed the seed round with some of the uh, brightest uh, angel investors, uh, both here in Sweden and in the US as well. Um, our product will be ready for release in 2020. It's in development at full speed. And Flype won the top idea award at Sweden's largest startup competition, Venture Cup. And of course, we're winners of the scale challenge. And last but not least, um, recognized retailers are already lining up uh, to, to deliver with Flype as soon as we launch, already guaranteeing uh, a supply of over a thousand parcels per day. Uh, we have MOU signed and uh, others that are waiting online. Um, a question that we often use, uh, get asked is, it's travelers, so how does it work, trust and security? We did a lot of research and development uh, on this area with airlines, with airports, uh, and other agencies, um, particularly here in Sweden. Here in Sweden. And uh, the entire system is fully secure. Um, first of, 
first and foremost, every traveler that registers on the platform goes through a KYC process where they submit their credentials and get it verified. Um, and of course, the entire delivery process and every aspect of it is completely insured um, in case anything happens. And of course, the entire system is built on review and rating system, ensuring the highest quality of delivery at all time. As I said, our product is in full development, it is at full speed of development, and these are some snapshots. It will be ready for release quarter four this year, and we're very excited. And we're happy and proud to be working alongside an amazing team. My co-founder and CTO was a previous senior software developer at Microsoft. I myself has a background uh, within uh, business development and entrepreneurship. Um, I've built three companies before and uh, come from a family office background. And we're proud uh, to be working with an amazing advisory board who's uh, uh, challenging us and, and uh, backing us every step through the way. Oh, COVID-19. Of course, as many companies fly, has been affected by COVID. And the negative part is that it will take time. It will take time for travel to get back to its previous levels. Uh, current estimates say 2022, um, and we're quite aware of that. But also COVID has given us some positive impact as well. Now more than ever, travelers will need the extra cash when they travel, which is a big and important factor. It's one of the factors that resulted in Airbnb's success after the financial crisis in 2008. And of course, airlines are desperate for travelers, which is making them very keen to initiate collaborations with us uh, as soon as we launch. And we're already in talks with airlines and booking sites and planning for collaborations. And of course, last but not least, because of the pandemic, retailers are shifting their focus to online, which makes a next day delivery much more important than it ever was. Today, we're raising $2 million. Um, and with that, what we uh, estimate to accomplish is uh, 360,000 trips with flight within two years time, generating $3.25 million uh, in revenue uh, as a mid case scenario. Join us at flight in saving the retailers from the retail apocalypse uh, for the futures express. It is decentralized and it is now. Thank you very much. And I'd be more than happy to take your questions. Um, there's a question in the chat box by Will Wong. Parcels are then limited. Parcels then are limited by size and weight. Correct. Correct. Yes, and eighty-six percent of parcels that are sent each year are uh, small-sized parcels that are under two kilograms uh, and a regular or small size. Um, so that's uh, that's not an issue. Uh, it doesn't set a big limitation. Um. The next question also from Will is what do mules answer when asked about safety and legality of products at the airports? So uh, one important uh, factor here that I have to mention is that uh, in the beginning, flight will not operate between, uh, for example, uh, US and Dubai. Uh, we're gonna operate within the US, so within the uh, between the states uh, and within the EU, so between the European uh, union countries. Um, and between the states or the countries, there are no customs. Uh, so we, uh, the, the customs issue is uh, not uh, not an issue here at all uh, for flight. Um, and with regards to have you packed your bag yourself uh, and these kind of questions, uh, yes, you have. Um, we've built the entire delivery process uh, to ensure maximum security and uh, that we comply with all the regulations. So when a traveler goes into a store and would pick up a parcel, they'd see what they're picking up exactly, just like you're buying something at the store. So you pick up your private perfume, you pick up the mascara, uh, and of course the, the, the stores have, have that for you and you, you know the exact content of the parcel. The next question is, what safeguards are there against dangerous contents or contraband? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, this is one of the reasons why uh, cosmetic companies, especially, especially such as Rituals and Sephora, uh, are very interested in collaborating with us uh, as soon as we launch. Because today, 
such products such as perfumes, for example, cannot be shipped by air uh, with with uh, traditional delivery companies. It's an international law, uh, which makes it difficult for them to be shipped with express. But when it comes to a private person, a private traveler, you can take with you five bottles of perfume in your bag and there is no issue with that at all. Um, so that's uh, one of our USPs actually uh, towards uh, these uh, retailers. Um, otherwise, uh, if there are items of great danger, of course, we will not be collaborating with such retailers that sell uh, such things. Um, another question is based on your flight testing. What is the probability of delivery failure? Um, so uh, we haven't launched yet, uh, and therefore we don't have accurate statistics uh, on a large scale. Um, but we've done a market test, and we sent 500 parcels uh, from, from Stockholm uh, to other cities. Out of those 500, four were not delivered. They were sent with one person, four parcels. Um, and what happened is that that person missed his flight. Uh, so these things may happen. Uh, out of 500 parcels, only four got lost. Uh, not lost, sorry, were not delivered. And this was a manual test. So when the platform is up and running, uh, this could be mediated easily in a lot of ways. Uh, one of them is basically to redirect these parcels to another traveler who's traveling to that area. Um, or worst case scenario, um, send them with, a, with DHL basically and give the customer a full refund. Um, yeah. The next question is, are there tax or duties implications for pickup versus delivery? Uh, no, yeah. not really. No. Sorry? It goes on. Or the payment transaction is based on delivery location. Yeah, it's based on del delivery location. So, for example, if, you, uh, if you're based in Arkansas and you're buying something in Arkansas that is getting delivered to you from New York, uh, you pay the Arkansas uh, state tax. Um, you don't pay the New York state tax. Um, the next question is, is there an exception list like luxury items or a cost limit per parcel? So uh, one of our first, one of the first customers that approached us were luxury item brands. Uh, we have an MOU with uh, a marketplace for luxury watches here in Stockholm. Uh, we're actually their first option that they want to use as soon as we launch. Uh, another one is a luxury, uh, they're an art company in, in, in uh, India. They sell paintings. Uh, in the EU uh, and so there's a huge demand from that industry because we solve a lot of problems that they're facing today with the traditional uh, traditional uh, providers and so this th there are two points uh, that are very important that I want to mention here when for example the, the luxury watch company when they ship a watch today it costs them between 200 to 500 dollars per delivery this is what the flapper is going to get for that delivery. Uh, and we are, our, our delivery process, we help them uh, skip a lot of the problems that they face today with other, uh, with, with DHL, for example. Uh, so uh, on top of that, for a traveler to be able to deliver luxury items, uh, they'd have to build their digital identity. Uh, they'd have to be experienced. Uh, so they reach a certain star rating with a certain amount of uh, previous deliveries to be able to access that part of the platform, which gives them a much higher incentive to do a great job at every single delivery. Um, 